Welcome to this tutorial video on how convex mirrors work and how we draw ray diagrams to predict what we're going to see when we look into them. Convex mirrors surround us in our everyday life. We get to see them when we get onto a bus. They're often a, a small circular mirror with a really big field of view. You see them in small convenience stores uh, for security purposes. Parking garages and hospitals will often have them in tight corners so we can see what's coming up ahead. And the most common one is probably objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. Written at the bottom of the passenger side mirror in your average car. So why would we even install a mirror that gives us a false understanding of what is going on around us? Well, it gives us a bigger field of view. So when you look into a regular plane or a flat mirror, it's going to create an image that basically looks like you. It's going to be the same size, you're going to be right side up, and that image is going to appear to be on the other side of that mirror. So, when rays of light come in, they are going to bounce off it and reflect on the opposite side of the normal, a principle you should have learned earlier on in reflection. If it hits square on in the center, uh, it'll bounce straight back out. But on the edges, you're going to see that your rays of light are spreading out from where they've come in. So, how do we explain what we're seeing in a security mirror or a convex mirror? Well, we draw ray diagrams. And so to draw a ray diagram or a convex mirror, we're going to be drawing a couple of things. Uh, although an infinite number of rays of light come off any object, that's how everyone gets to see something in the room, we're just going to focus on a couple of them. So here we go. When we draw a ray of light that comes off parallel to what we call the primary axis, that's that flat line at the bottom right there. This is our object. Uh, in physics, often a number of us are poor at drawing. And so we simply represent an object as an arrow. Uh, if the tip of the arrow is at the top, it means it's right side up. And so that ray of light comes in and touches the mirror. Uh, we're going to be using that uh, little dotted line there as an example of where the rays of light are going to reflect from, because it's going to make the geometry a little bit uh, tidier. But in reality, it will actually touch the mirror. And both of these rays, when they reflect, are going to come back out. So that ray of light that comes and hits at the center of the mirror, light's really small. And so from the perspective of light, that big curved mirror, it's going to act like just a regular plane mirror. We've learned that the rules are that the angle that a ray of light comes in at is going to be the same it comes out at. And so we measure this to be somewhere in the ballpark of 19 degrees. So on the other side, um, we're going to find the same thing. So uh, if it comes out at approximately the same angle right here. These angles should be exactly the same. And so you can do that with either a protractor. Another neat trick is that if you measure the distance of the height of your object and give the same distance down below, put a little dot there and connect them, uh, they're similar triangles, and so your angles have to be the same. So what is the top ray of light going to do? A ray of light that comes in parallel to your primary axis, when it hits, it's going to reflect upwards. And how much it reflects upwards depends on the curve of the mirror. But for now, we're going to say that this is what's called a negative focal point. And if light hits this mirror and reflects, it's going to look as if that light had come from over here. So I'm going to have some dotted lines down here to indicate where it looks like it came from. But on this side, I'm going to solidify that ray of light, make it a solid line, so that's what light actually did. Now, when these rays of light go into your eye, our eyes find out where things are, we think they are where they are, because since we've been little babies, we've watched multiple rays of light diverge from a location, and where they appear to come from, We've traced those rays of light back to the object. That's where we tend to see things. And so I'm going to draw our image, what our brain sees. It assumes that where these two rays of light appear to have come from, that that's where, indeed, a real life object is. And so let's get that arrow as straight as possible. Good. So this pink arrow here represents where our brains think the light came from. So when we see these rays of light that reflect off the mirror and come out, and these enter our eyes, our brains say that 
by process of elimination, the only place where these two rays of light could possibly come from is right here, and we see it as smaller. And so, when we're looking at the different parts of our diagram here, your object is found right here in front of the mirror. Your mirror is represented by this curve with the little hatch marks on the back side of it. Your focal point will eventually, once we get into math, call this a negative focal point. So your focal point is right here. Your image, we've done that in pink, and so we won't highlight it, but we'll just be reminded that that indeed was our image. And the last piece of language, the primary axis, it's more of a mathematical idea than anything else. So this right there is your primary axis that runs all the way across here, all the way to there. Is it going to be always true that no matter where an object is in front of a mirror, it's always going to make an image that looks smaller and right side up and the final concept of virtual or imaginary, that's going to come up later when we say that we can't actually project your light and make an image on a screen, similar to a data projector or an old school slide projector. I don't know. Let's go take a look at a few different scenarios that we can use to see if the situation is always going to be the same or should we expect something different if we get up real close or real far. So let's do some additional practice on drawing ray diagrams for convex mirrors. If we're really close or really far, does it make a difference in what we're going to see in our image? Uh, we get our uh, ruler out and start drawing. We draw a ray diagram that comes in parallel to your primary axis. Again, in fact, we could just mass produce this so it'll be more efficient. So we draw from the top of each of our images and we draw that ray of light coming into this little dotted line that's going to represent where it's hitting the mirror. And then, oh, let's do the fourth one while we're at it. Close enough. And so our rays, every one of these rays, when it hits the mirror, is going to reflect upwards as if it had touched that mirror. So here we go. I'm going to start by drawing a dotted line from here because I can't draw a dot and solid line at the same time. You don't have to draw it all the way up into the words if you don't want to. So we're just simply connecting where the negative focal length or focal point here is and where that ray of light came in untouched. And so that's going to represent where the ray of light will appear to have come from. Now I'm going to turn those into solid lines on this side of the mirror because the light actually did do that. So in ray diagrams, a dotted line is going to represent where the light appears to be coming from. So again, a reminder that we can't see the ray of light that comes in towards the mirror. We won't actually see that because we can only see the reflected light that comes out. So now we've got our reflected rays of light that are coming off the mirror. And now we have to go and consider what happens with the other ray of light. So we've got... Uh, I'm going to draw the next one in red. You can draw it in whatever color that you would like. But those rays of light are going to come from the same location here. And they're going to go hit the mirror right at the center, where the center of the mirror and this imaginary line called the primary axis, where they connect. Sometimes it's called the principal axis, depending on who you talk to. And so each of these rays of light is going to come and hit the mirror at a different angle, depending on how close it is to the mirror. And so what we're going to do is we're going to draw each of these at exactly the same angle they came out at. So uh, if this was, let's say, about 40 degrees in here. So 40 all the way to 180. So on the other side, 40 degrees would be somewhere in that ballpark. Yeah, there we go. And in this case, if this one was about 20 degrees off, then draw this one at about 20 degrees off. Again, you can use a protractor. You can use a ruler to measure the height of your object and do the same below. Do a little dot and connect that way. Either way, you'll get the same angle that it comes in at. I just happen to have a fancy program that'll do that for me. So it's going to be about 13 degrees off 
from this line. So I count down here, 12, 13. And then finally, if that's my angle here at about 11 degrees off, so I'll count down 11 degrees here. There it goes. And so that's what the ray of light actually does. It's going to bounce off the mirror and come out in this direction. Each one of these will. So the question is, what does it do when it goes into our eye? Our eye has expectations that wherever two rays of light appear to be diverging from, then that's where we're going to see it. So I'm going to get my dotted line out now. I'm going to extend these rays backwards. Try to do it as straight and faithfully as I can here. And so where these rays of light appear to be coming from, that's where our eye is going to be tricked into seeing something that's not actually there. Last step, draw your objects. And so here is our object in this case. So this is where your object would be. The rays of light appear to be coming from this location. And again, and again, and again. So every time we're comparing the object height, which I've kept pretty standard here, no matter what, our image is going to appear to get smaller, no matter what, in terms of where we are in front of it. If you are really close to a convex mirror, you don't really see a really big difference, usually, if it's a modest convex mirror. But the further you get away, the more it is going to make you shrink. So a couple of final questions. Does moving the object closer and farther from a convex mirror change the image properties? Or is the image always smaller, right set up and behind the mirror? It doesn't matter. It's always going to be the same. And does the image uh, change as you move further and further away from the mirror? Well, for sure it does. The exaggeration of the shrinking is more impressive. And so as you move further and further from the mirror, it gets smaller and but the image properties are always the same. Smaller, right set up, and behind the mirror. We go back up and we see our first diagram right here. We see an individual, looks like a soldier who is, or a border security guard who is looking underneath a vehicle. This makes him look a lot smaller than you typically expect a security guard to look. And the building behind looks smaller as well. Thank you for your willingness to explore convex mirrors with me.